It's recommended that ChemTrack particle counters be calibrated on an annual basis. We supply a calibration procedure which outlines the procedure for calibrating the PC3400, PC4400 particle counter. In this procedure, it details the items you'll need to perform the calibration. Here we have RO purified or steam distilled water, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, flow meter, stopwatch, tubing clamps, some tubing, a micro pipette with clean pipette tips, polystyrene latex calibration spheres, a cleaning brush, and a syringe in case additional cleaning is necessary with a solution, and some extra jugs or containers just to catch excess flow. Here we have a typical installation of a ChemTrack particle counter. We have the particle counter itself with external flow cell and the flow control weir. The flow control weir provides a constant head pressure to the sensor to maintain a flow rate of 75 milliliters per minute. You'll see at the top of the weir we have our overflow and it's important that the sight glass remains about half full so that we have this constant head differential. The head differential exists between the top of the weir where it overflows at the sight glass and wherever this drain cup is positioned. As we lower or raise the drain cup we affect the flow rate. If we lower the drain cup the flow rate will be higher through the sensor and if we raise the drain cup, the flow rate will be slower. Okay, before performing calibration, we'll need to clean the sensor. When we go into the display of the unit, if we hit the down arrow next to the display two times, we come to the status screen. And here we can see the laser percentage, which is at 100% on this unit, and the cell percentage, which is at 98%. The cell percentage tells us the cleanliness of the sensor itself. As this number drops, it indicates that the sensor is becoming dirty and needs to be cleaned. After cleaning, we like this reading to be approximately 95% or higher. The laser percentage itself is a measurement of the efficiency of the laser. Over time, this laser percentage will change as the laser ages. Preferably, it's going to be in the 90% to 110% range. So to clean the sensor, the first thing we're going to do is stop the flow using our tubing clamp. Just simply place the tubing clamp around the tubing, tighten it down, and this will stop the flow. This allows you to keep flow going to the weir during the whole cleaning and calibration process. So now we'll disconnect the tubing from the bottom of the sensor, as well from the top of the sensor. And then we'll use our cleaning brush to clean the sensor. Just carefully insert the brush into the top and gently just kind of work the brush down and it will find the flow cell which is only about 750 micron in diameter so it's a pretty narrow flow cell the brush fits pretty snugly so what you want to do is get it in there and then gently just move it slightly back and forth but you can see from this picture how far down that brush goes in when it's fully pushed down so you want to make sure your brush is down here and not and not here this position means the brush is not fully inserted so once the brush is in, gently back and forth a few times, then take the brush out. And then you'll want to put the brush into the bottom. And same thing, just gently try to find that hole and then work the brush back and forth. Be careful not to force the brush it, because the size of the flow cell, of course, the brush has to be a small diameter. But it is possible to, you know, to actually bend these brushes. And once they're bent, they are considered damaged and they really shouldn't be reused. If you pull the brush out and you notice that the, that the ends of the bristle are bent or, or something is wrong there, you may have some mineral deposits in the sensor. Or if you clean the sensor and the cell condition doesn't climb up into the upper 90 percentile range, and especially if it's not above 90 percent, you may want to consider using a syringe to do additional cleaning. The syringe can be filled with any sort of cleaner. It could be alcohol, vinegar, CLR, Hawk Rover. ChemTrack does provide a couple different materials for the sensor. A Night Tough coated aluminum sensor is a standard product, and that's basically a Teflon coated aluminum product. And the other option we have is Peak. Uh, but most of the products that we, that we sell have the Night Tough coated aluminum, and the Night Tough coating protects the aluminum from most cleaners and solvents, but you don't want to take a chance of damaging the sensor by letting an aggressive cleaner sit in there too long. We'll simply attach the syringe to the bottom of the sensor and then you can attach another piece of tubing off the top of the sensor to a drain but then inject your cleaner and just let it sit for some time so that it does additional cleaning to the sensor and then you can actually even rapidly move the syringe back and forth which can help give the sensor additional cleaning. After using the cleaner go back and repeat the cleaning with your brush.
Okay, so the next step is getting the jugs ready um, and, and the tubing ready so that we can perform our calibration. All right, so we're going to take the cap off the DI water. You will want to obviously save the cap, not lose that. We'll be putting that back on the jugs at a later time. We're going to want to have a, approximately about three feet of tubing. Okay, and then we're going to cut this tubing off. Okay, the next piece of tubing we're using here is a, is a shorter piece of Teflon tubing. And this is more rigid tubing. We use this so that it doesn't, when we put it in the jug, it, it won't coil up on us. So just simply just kind of insert that tubing. Now this is 3 seconds um, OD tubing, and that's going into an eighth inch ID tubing. So it's a pretty good snug fit. And then what we're going to do is rinse this tubing off before we put it in our jug. Now this jug here we're actually going to use as our rinse water jug meaning we're not going to add spheres to this jug. We're just going to use this to kind of clean off our tubing. Okay. okay. And then we can insert the tubing into the jug. Our main reason for rinsing the outside of the tubing is just a precautionary step to make sure that we don't contaminate the jug with any particles. Okay, the next step is we're going to place the jug on top of the particle counter. Now the particle counter has just enough area up here to be able to place the jug. You just want to make sure it's seated securely before you let go of it. And you're going to take the other end of the tubing and connect it to the bottom of the sensor. And next we're going to take the flow meter and we're going to attach it to the top of the sensor. You can just simply place it up here for now. Cut a relatively short piece of tubing, maybe only just five or six inches. Attach one side to the bottom, sorry, to the top of the sensor. We're attaching the other end to the bottom of the flow meter, the inlet side. If you have a, a flow meter with one of these uh, needle valves on it, just make sure that it's all the way open and then flip the flow meter, you can sit there on top of the unit. Now we're going to attach tubing to the top of the flow meter and run it down to our drain. So we'll simply attach that to the flow meter and cut this piece sufficiently long so that we can go down into, in this case I'm just using the beaker here to catch my excess. Put that in the jug. Once we have this all set up, the next thing we need to do is calibrate the flow meter. We're going to need a syringe to start the flow through the sensor and through the flow meter. We'll also need our graduate cylinder and a stopwatch. We're just going to attach the syringe and just use this to draw water through the sensor and place the tubing back into the jug. Then we need to place another tubing clamp onto this tubing so that this will allow us to adjust flow through the flow meter. So we're going to dial this down until we see where the flow meter is approximately at what would be 75 mils per minute. Generally with these flow meters it's the bottom of the ball that correlates with the desired flow rate. Typically they say the middle of the ball but what we generally find is that we get the 75 milliliters when the bottom of the ball is at that 75 milliliter mark. And now we'll check that flow using our graduate cylinder. We don't generally use the needle valve on the flow meter itself because this can create a pressure drop which can cause degassing to occur, putting bubbles onto the little metal ball in the flow meter which changes its buoyancy. So we generally will, will want to control the flow rate downstream of the flow meter just to ensure that doesn't happen. So we're going to make sure that our flow meter is showing 75 mils per minute what we think is 75 mils per minute, and then we're going to start our stopwatch and start measuring the flow. And there's one minute. And then we can look at our flow. In this case, we're actually just a little bit under 75 mils per minute. So the bottom of the ball even is not directly correlating to, to where the flow needs to be, so we'll just simply redo the test until we find at what point actually gives us the 75 milliliters per minute mark. We don't have to be dead on at 75, but preferably 74 to 76.
Okay, now on this rotometer, we know that when the ball is centered on the 80 mil mark, that's where we are getting 75 milliliters per minute. It's important to calibrate your flow meter because they won't be exact. So it's always important to check that before you do your calibration and find out where that 75 milliliter per minute mark is at. So we're going to adjust that ball for right at 80. All right, so we got that set. Now that ball will change a little bit as the volume in the water changes, so you need to occasionally check to see where that ball is at. The one thing we want to check here is our cell condition and make sure that we are at that 95% mark or higher. In this case, we are. If it's not at 95%, if it happens to be at 93 or 92, that's still okay. But there is a procedure for adjusting the cell voltage. Um, if it gets too low, we'll want to raise that up. Now, we'll go back to our counts page. And what we're looking to see here is how, much, how many counts are in the what we call the blank water solution. Now this is not the jug I'm going to be using for calibration. This is our flush water jug. But I am just kind of curious to see that this particular jug of water appears to have around 70 or so counts. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is speed up the sampling frequency. So we're going to hit the menu button and go to sample setup. And we're going to change our sample period to 10 seconds. And our sample frequency 20 seconds. And then we hit the menu button two times to exit out of the menu. And what this is going to do is speed up the sampling frequency so that we're getting a reading every 20 seconds versus once a minute.